All right, hey guys, I am here, and this is a really special episode because um, I'm not, I don't have just one guest, I have two, and I am joined here today by... It's me, LK, and me, Lopez Pierce, or Jay for short. Or Jay for short. Okay, cool. It's like a twofer. We're not really sure how this uh, episode is going to be structured, but... You know, I wanted to get back on and sort of get back into the swing of things because, again, Britanna is still one of the things that, like, bring me great joy. And obviously, it's brought y'all a great joy. I mean, y'all, it brought y'all together in a way, and I love that. Um, oh, it 100% brought us together. Um, Don't tell my mom. Like, a love story within the fandom. I've heard of a few of them happening, and I think that's just, like, Cool, cool. So why don't y'all tell me a little bit about how y'all came to be? It, you can go into as much detail as you want, or you can just sort of give us the basics. I guess basics would start with literally everything she wrote, I reblogged and fell in love with it. Like the character building, world building, and just having a different facet on the characters that I already love, having so many worlds to be in, mm-hmm. and the amount of research and development that was put into each piece was something that you don't see often uh-huh. and it just captured me almost immediately and it didn't matter what world they were in we've been following each other a long time for like six years six <laughs> years yes yeah, since i got on tumblr oh, basically yeah. um but i had not read all of her stories because she writes stuff that i'm not into <laughs> superheroes, <laughs> like stuff. superheroes and stuff okay so we'll tell the mug story i'll tell the mug story after i tell the rest okay tell the so, rest <laughs> I flirted with her blatantly. Okay. I got her number probably about a year before we started dating. Okay. And I texted her like every day for like three months. And she would reply, and she's like, my day's been good. How's her day? And I flirted with her and I was like, oh, I have family that lives, you know, in New England and you're going to Boston College. We should try to hang out sometime. You're like, oh, and she's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. Never happened. <laughs> And then also, she would spend a lot of the time sending me pictures of her dog. And I don't know if everybody knows this, and it's a very controversial opinion, but I do not like dogs. <laughs> but now she's in love with my dog, because he's a good boy. But anyway, <laughs> so she has no idea, zero idea that I'm flirting with her, none whatsoever. And then it literally takes me being like, I will be a, an hour away from you on these dates. We need to go get lunch. Mm-hmm. So that turned into her coming up with Okay, the and so I drove all the way to her. She was supposed to meet by my house, and then I offered to drive to her and take her to the airport. <laughs> yes, so she decided to spend all day, and she met my mom before we were even dating. <laughs> this is what I walked into. <laughs> the mug story is funny, though. So this was not a flirting present. This was not a let's get together present. It was a you've done so much for the fandom, and I appreciate it. And, like, backstory, a bunch of people were sending me mugs, like, years ago, because I collect the Starbucks mugs from different cities. Uh-huh. And I was in Disney World with my girlfriend at the time and got her an Animal Kingdom coffee mug. hmm And I asked her her dress and never sent it because I was afraid it was going to break. And then never sent it, never sent it, never sent it. And she didn't get it until the first time. She came to visit me after we were and dating. And it's literally sitting right next to me on the bedside table right now, because I drink my coffee out of it every morning. <laughs> Three years later, she got her coffee mug. Oh, nice. That's cute. That's cute. And she likes to make jokes that, you know, like, I liked her before that, but <laughs> that's not that's not my M.O. My M.O. is not date somebody and then buy gifts for other people. Yeah, yeah. It's really an appreciation gift, because I saw other people sending her so much stuff yeah i you, i remember that that period of time where you got a bunch of ass and people talking about mugs i remember that that's so yeah cool. that's i have like probably 150 starbucks mugs and we wow. have so much room for them in our apartment that's funny well you know with coronavirus like everything just kind of happened so mm-hmm. she wasn't supposed to be living with me until like now. right now and she was living here from the end of March March to the end of May so everything got moved to the storage unit here and we just kind of just mm-hmm. went with it y'all are 
like two of the most busiest people I know of. I've been trying to sort of set dates down for each of y'all to like sit down and have a recording session for like over a month. But then so much has happened. Y'all have real life stuff. I have real life stuff. And then obviously, you know, with what happened, it was just like everybody was not ready. I think it's a good uh, yeah, when it, just kind of throw it out there. In that episode where me and Maytay just remembered Naya, I talked about how I felt like Naya gave me that friendship with her. It was the roots of it. By the way, that was a really like healing episode. So thank you for that. It, for me, it was like I needed to get this out. I needed to go through this process. Like I'm nothing and I'm no one, but I just what little platform I have. It's like, I want to honor her and remember her. And, um, anyways, like in that episode, I talked about how like Naya and Santana are the roots and those roots turned into this beautiful friendship that I have with her. And I feel like that could be said for like you two. It's like, you know, the roots of your relationship and your love and what you have. It's like, it's Naya and it's Santana and it's Britanna. That's just so wonderful when, I hear these stories about, you know, love coming out of fandom, whether that's like Glee fandom or whatever fandom it is. I think that's just, it's a beautiful thing. And it's not just like our relationship. My friend Allie Shay, like we've been friends for five or six years. There was a whole group of us from like Uh several years ago as well that I'm still friends on Facebook with. Uh-huh. And we still talk. We don't get to see each other much, but, I mean, Allie Shays is invited to her wedding. Well, my best friend, Nick, I met through Britanna, and she is the best woman in our wedding. So, so it's not just each other. Three of my bridesmaids I met through Britanna. So that's what I was talking about, like, in that episode where <laughs> I was, I, I said, if you look around and you talk to different people in the fandom, you're going to find so many friendships. Like, not to bring it down, but, like, Naya lives on in these things that we've built together. I agree. We, like, we talked about it a lot, um, about, like, incorporating Naya and Britanna into our wedding. Uh-huh. Um, especially after Naya passed. Yeah. And originally, we're doing, like, an anniversary dance where, like, all the couples go on the dance floor and then you see who's been married the longest. Uh-huh. And we were originally going to do the Eva Cassidy cover of Songbird. Uh-huh. But then we were like, no, we really want to have Naya a part of it, so we're going to do Naya's cover of Songbird for that mm-hmm. dance. Um, and then Taylor is making us um, almost like chandeliers, like, to hang over the tables, and they're all Songbird. Oh. One of our readings is actually um, from a Heather Hogan Glee review of the 100th episode. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're, like, really playing up the Naya Britannia thing in, like, subtle ways, so it's not, like, mm-hmm. for everyone. But, I mean, there are going to be a lot of people... We're probably going to have two tables of people we met through the Britannia fandom. That's amazing and so wonderful. Which, and by the way, did you get your save the date today? Did oh, you know what? Uh, I, I checked the mail and I didn't. I'll probably uh, get it tomorrow. Yeah, I, I saw you putting them together uh, on Instagram and I'm like, oh, those look so, like, fancy. Yeah, they're magnets. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was, like, really adamant about having magnets. <laughs> and you want that much more money than just the card. Oh, neat, neat. Yeah, um, like, uh, y'all mentioned, like, people y'all are close to in the fandom that are gonna be there at your wedding. I'm like, oh, well, I follow them. I, Ali Shades, I know that name. I know that icon. Um, and Nick, uh, not everybody is, like, super duper close, but it's like, you're a friend of my friend, and that makes you right, cool. Exactly. And I, that's, just, yeah, I love it. It's just hard that everyone's all over the world. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Like, the Discord, it's an amazing place, and, there's almost always somebody on because everybody's so spread out. But at the same time, it makes things like if we all want to get together to watch something, it's always a little hard to uh, figure out time zones and because somebody's always like on the other side yeah. of the world asleep. And I really want to know, does Helen ever sleep? That is a legitimate question. I don't think Brent ever sleeps either. I don't think either one of them sleeps. I don't, I don't know. They all have their night watch and Nicole and I are in bed. <laughs> yeah. I'm an old lady. I can't, I can't do all that. And plus I get overwhelmed real easy. So I'm like, I'm just going to like skip away from this conversation because I don't know how to jump in. Another thing we can actually leapfrog to is, okay, if you want to talk about your, um, Naya, like music scholarship. Yeah. 
yeah. So um, we're putting together some stuff. We're probably going to do like an auction for like fan fiction and fan art, where all the money goes towards like the scholarship. Like we're not really charging; we're it's donations for the scholarship. Uh-huh. So that's the next the next step in that. The logistics aren't quite worked out yet. We've kind of been talking about it, uh-huh. trying to figure it out. Um, but it'll be like, oh, like we are gonna bring back fan slide, and like for five dollars, you can pick a song, and then like any of the authors that participate, um, can write like a like a hundred word drabble based on the song, and then we'll do prices for like longer things, like a one shot. There's a bunch of artists that want to participate, and they will uh, make you whatever fan art you want, which is really cool. That's really really cool, and I can't wait to see it come together and. And uh, I even said, like, I am the suckiest at updating and, like, getting things out. However, if it's for Naya, I will, like, force myself to, like, sit there and type like a monkey. People are really generous. They love to donate. But I think when you get something in return for your donation, Mm -hmm. it, like, it really helps. And we won't take the money. Like, we'll say, like, okay, like, donate to the scholarship. Send us your receipt and we'll do this. So that way everyone knows the money's going to the right place. I wish I could draw. So I could draw Britanna. Me too. <laughs> I see some amazing artwork out there, and I'm just like, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish I could do that. And, like, shout out to Taylor, who is always drawing. <laughs> like, all the time. She's freaking phenomenal. She's amazing. I think it's wonderful that, you, that you're putting your pain into a positive place. <laughs> So I, I just really had to do something, and that's kind of where the scholarship came from. And I think that's something we should all try to do, is we should all try to put our pain, like, somewhere positive. I don't know, I'm seeing a lot of people who are trying to do that, and then I'm also seeing, I don't know, this might get cut out, because I might regret saying it, but I'm also I seeing... I know what you're going to say. I'm seeing a lot of people do inappropriate things, or you know, press boundaries that, you know, I don't agree with. And here's what I say is I say, as long as the person isn't trying to contact Naya's friends or family, I think they should be able to grieve in the way they need to grieve. I know there were some concerns about the money. And like, if you want to talk to me directly, send me a message. I will give you my personal phone number and you can talk to me about how the mm-hmm. money's being managed because mm-hmm. I want everyone to feel like they can like trust that it's going to the scholarship. Again, like, I, I I think people need to stop trying to dictate how others, like, process and pay tribute to her. Everybody's method is, like, different. So Yeah, absolutely. Definitely do think what you're trying to do in her name is really beautiful. And, uh, Thank ins- you. Inspiring. So anybody listening, I just, I urge you, you know, if you can't donate, that's fine. But put your pain somewhere positive. Like, where are you putting your pain? Are you like going online and are you, is your pain like fueling you to attack other people or be nasty to other people or are you using your pain and channeling it into something that Naya would be proud of? Do that. Even if it's a small thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> okay. I'm going to give y'all a bunch of AU scenarios. I want each of y'all to answer. Okay. Coffee shop AU. Who is the barista and who frequents the coffee shop? Okay, you go first. I feel like Riz just has a lock on this, so I have to go with her head cannon. Like, Brittany's definitely the barista, and Tantana's, like, comes in all the time. <laughs> I actually would flip it. Really? Yeah. Honest. I think that Santana has an underlying nerdness that nobody really sees. I can see Brittany, especially with Pierce being kind of, like, out there. Maybe he didn't have a really good job when she was growing up, and uh-huh. she has to pay for school whatever way she can, and she's going to work as a barista. Oh, that's what I said. I said Brittany is the barista. Oh, shit. I guess we did think the same. <laughs> so you agree with me. <laughs> Maybe I have to pay more attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I agree with that. Brittany as the barista, just because, like, I feel like Santana is a little bit too... She don't want to get not a morning person. She doesn't I want need to get... my coffee. Leave me the f alone. She doesn't want to get her hands dirty. So this is a high school college AU, I guess. That's what it says. Who is a straight A student and who's the back row slacker? So this is an AU scenario. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I personally think Santana's dad would ride her hard to hit the books, get good grades, 
and Brittany's a slacker on the scale of assignments, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but she would have the insane ability to piss Santana off just by being done in 20 minutes and still getting an A. Oh, yes. Sleep in the back, doesn't do shit, doesn't raise her hand, doesn't participate unless she's called on, but still gets good grades. Oh my god. I, like I really like that. That works. That really works. I may or may not have written a few things like that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so the next one is Rivals to Loves AU. Who takes the rivalry seriously and who is just half in it just to push the other's button? Oh, Santana 100% takes it so seriously. 100%. She's like, why are you looking at me? (laughs) And Brittany, like, is getting a rise out of her because she thinks it's funny. Uh Like, she always, like, makes fun of people on the sly. Yeah. Like, thinks, like, Small dig, sideways stab, you know, whatever. And then she's like, oh, it's okay. You shouldn't be mad at me. I'm cute. All right. So soulmate AU. Who is eager to meet their soulmate and who absolutely does not want to meet their soulmate? I feel like there's Uh a tarot card reading somewhere at some carnival that they both go to. They go to different high schools in the same area and they bump into each other on the way. And Santana's just like, I can't believe I got dared to do this. This is stupid. And Brittany has gone right before her, and her says, your soulmate will walk into your life very soon, and they will be angry and <laughs> just flowing with rage, but they will be the nicest person you've ever met. And she bumps into Santana on the way out. You're thinking of these things so quick, <laughs> That's brilliant. The next one is Dr. A.U., Oh, I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> which one is the long-suffering doctor and which one is the patient? Oh, oh, this is different. I see Brittany being a medical doctor, though. Like, just reading a book and just, like, getting it. See, like I would say Santana because of the pressure from her dad. Yeah, yeah, me too. Also, I think Santana would look really hot in, like, a white lab coat. <laughs> oh, agreed. I just imagine, like, Brittany, like getting a really stupid injury by doing oh yeah she's like chasing lord tubbington yeah the yard and trips over like a two-foot fence she put up to keep the rabbits out of her cabbage has like a six-inch incision that she needs like stitches for and she's just crying about lord tubbington still outside when they had to bring her to get stitches and so it's a really ridiculous like story how she got there whatever and like in walks santana in her her white lab coat and Brittany is just like whoa yeah and she's really pissed off because she just came off a double she's ready to go home and then this happens and then you know she's like quietly charmed by Brittany or she's just super annoyed and then Brittany's back like a week and a half later with a different injury (laughs) that's a good one I love that I love, oh my god, I, I like the idea of, like, Brittany purposely getting these sort of weird minor injuries every other week or so, just because she, like, she wants to see Santana. Oh my god, that's so cute. And Santana is just like, you are the most unlucky person I've ever met. Okay, so, uh, bodyguard AU, who is the bodyguard and who is the superstar that they are protecting? Brittany's the bodyguard. Santana's the bodyguard. Brittany looks so hot as the bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, but you've seen her dressed as Britney Spears. I mean, come on, on stage. Yeah, but Santana would do anything for fame. I know, but she would also cut a bitch. This is, could be played either way, and it would work. That one, this is a hard one. Also, uh, if anybody wants to uh, write a bodyguard AU fic based off of the Whitney Houston uh, movie, like, go do oh that. Oh my god, I would... <laughs> All right, so the next one is um, Pirate AU. Who is the pirate, and who is the member of the royal family who did not sign up for this? Oh, come on, this is like Savage! Or do you want me to go, because you know I have a good one already. No, did, didn't you read Savage? Did you, <laughs> Nicole, did you read Savage? Uh, there's so many fakes. And Santana's a pirate, and Brittany and Sugar get taken by the pirate. Although, I really, I, like, honestly, if it was me, I would think Brittany would be the pirate. Mm-hmm. Like, I just feel like she's like with like this rough and tongue bull gang of pirates. And then, like, Santana's, like, the beautiful princess. And then, like, you know, everyone thinks she's going to kill her because she's a pirate. But then Brittany falls in love with her. Um, no. I have Santana being the pirate. But that's because her dad maybe worked on a fishing dock. They came into the country and had to find their way. And they ended up coming across 
like this deal they couldn't turn down and Santana learned how to man the boat, fish, do the ropes. She climbs up the ropes like some weird gymnastics bullshit <laughs> where she's like flying from the sides of the sails and crazy stuff. And Brittany like is riding her horse and gets lost and somehow ends up in this little island cove where the boat had parked because everybody needed to come for land. You don't park the boat, you dock the boat. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you anchor the boat if you don't park it. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, everybody's gone off somewhere, and Santana's first, this is her big deal, this is her big duty, you know, make sure nothing happens. And then she sees this beautiful girl who fell off a horse, and she's like, oh, shit. And just, like, <laughs> leaves the boat to go find her. Because she, like, fell off the horse, like, in this cove of beautifulness. Alrighty, so the next one is, I mean, it's not totally a you, but it's like on this list. I'm gonna read it out anyways. Um, it says, childhood best friends a you. Which one was super obviously in love with the other? Brittany. And who was the oblivious <laughs> one? Brittany was definitely in love, and Santana was totally oblivious because she's super straight. You're shaking your head at me. I don't think I think Brittany would be oblivious at a young age. Oh, I don't. To be, you don't? No, I don't. I think Santana would know and not say anything, but I think Brittany would be oblivious because she's so just friendly and personable, and she's like, I feel like she's a per- person that connects with touch, even uh-huh. if it's just a pat on the shoulder, and uh-huh. it could be, you know, to any of her friends, and Santana melts on the inside, but just is in love with her from a young age, <laughs> just doesn't say anything till way later. I think Brittany would be oblivious. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I think Brittany is very in touch with her feelings. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I think she, very early on, would be an open book and, like, wouldn't know shame. Hey, you are like the Brittany. Okay. Uh, That's another question I have for y'all. Like, in, in your dynamic, who is the Brittany and who is the Santana? She's the Brittany. Where did you get that from? You're totally the Brittany. Why? Because you're just, like, very open about your feelings. You're always trying to make me talk about stuff. Um, <laughs> but we never do that. What, talk about stuff? Hello, insert Botana line. You're demoted. Heart locker, you're demoted. <laughs> what am I demoted to? <laughs> well, that that was it for that ask thing. But, like, if y'all are up for it, way back when me and Meite did do, talk about doing a part two to the sex one, it might be interesting um, <laughs> to do to do it with y'all. Seeing as how okay. y'all are a couple, if y'all are comfortable with this, I'm going to pose some asks of, like, how do you see Britannia reacting or doing this? Now that you asked us, who's the Brittany and who's the, who's the Santana, now we do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a different little ask thingy. Um, and this one is, it's going to be like a two-parter to the sex episode I did with Mayte. And I think it would be really interesting since I have a couple here sitting in with me. So, uh, but tell me if y'all aren't comfortable with any of these questions. What are Britannia like after sex? Cuddly, gross puddle of mess and cuteness. Just like laying there talking about their feelings and how their day was. And Yeah, no, I would agree. I think Santana really needs cuddles. I think her being okay with her, taking so, it taking her so long to be okay with her sexuality that sometimes she still needs the encouragement from Brittany that, it's okay, they're going to be okay, and this is what she wants. Favorite body part of their partner? Okay, I'm going to answer first, and I'll let y'all think. All okay. right. I feel like Santana is a boob woman. Like, she appreciates everything, but I don't know why. I don't know why. I've always felt like... Oh, see, I think she's like a butt woman. Me too. I agree. Mm. See, I think Brittany is the butt woman. No, I think Brittany is like a total boob girl. I guess I'm thinking about... At, you know, at the beginning of Valerie, where they're kind of just standing around with Rachel, and then Brittany just, like, s- yeah. smacks Santana on the ass. Like, but, you know, I, I think a case could be made for either way. Okay, this is a weird one, and I, I don't know. I, I might cut it if we don't have anything to say. But it says, dirty secret. Name a dirty secret of your OTP. Which, I'm not, I don't know. What's your weirdest headcanon about them? I think Brittany gave... They gave it away when they're like, Brittany likes to smell and lick armpits. <laughs> <laughs> Although Brittany doesn't really keep a secret. No. Mm, that's true. So, yeah. 
So we caught we got caught by my mom on the kitchen table covered in flour. Nobody had pants on. She's talking about Britannia, not us. Yeah, just to be clear. That, yeah. that, that would be Brittany telling how their weekend went. This is something that came up in my discussion with Mayte, uh, but maybe y'all will have a different take on it. I don't think she and I came down on a def- definite answer, but um, favorite position. For each or as a couple? However you want to answer it. <laughs> like, I still, I still think, despite all of her bark and no bite, Santana uh-huh. is definitely the need of the slow start, the soft touch. Mm-hmm. Even if she doesn't need to be, quote-unquote, warmed up, I think it takes her a while to get in her comfort zone. Mm-hmm. But I think the slow, methodical, Brittany does her first, probably missionary. <laughs> yeah, I think they're very vanilla. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think so. The way I write them, personally, I write them to be very adventurous. And I write them very vanilla. <laughs> See, that's a, another thing that's wonderful about fandom is, like, you can find what speaks to you. It's like, if you don't like how I write them, you can turn around and you can look at LK's work and it's like, maybe that's what works for you. That's what you need out of your Britannia. And, and you can also find somebody who put them in alien outfits and they're doing it in a spaceship. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's like... <laughs> we were just talking about that spaceship pic the other day in the Discord. They weren't in alien outfits, but they, we were talking about um about that spaceship pic. I've never heard of this pic. They're at, like, the Kennedy Space Center. They're, oh, like, oh, they're okay. not, like, in space. That's still weird. <laughs> yeah, they were on a trip with Brittany's parents. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go into the Discord and find this link, because I'm like, what? I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I like to imagine them as super adventurous. Like, in my latest fic, like, there's talk about costumes, and Brittany mentions, like, she got a stripper pole installed for Santana's birthday in their house. Like, that's how I like to write them. Super ridiculous and super adventurous. Okay, the next one is uh, location. Um, What do you think their favorite places to do the do are? Oh, on the couch. You were the couch thing. <laughs> I, for me, I think Brittany is more, like, adventurous. It's like, let's do it in the elevator. Let's do it in, like, your office or whatever. I think Santana is a little bit, she needs a little bit more encouragement to go there. Yeah, I think they like to do it in bed. I really think they're vanilla. <laughs> and my, my couch answer, too, like, is based on me. My headcanon for them, like, right after they get married is they're both back in New York. New York. They're both in college. And their schedules don't really coincide very well. So um, it's literally like, where oh, the- Either we're going to do this, or I'm going to miss my business class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. And so that's where they end up on the couch, because it's in the middle of the house. Ooh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. <clears throat> the next question in this is, um, preference in giving or receiving. Who does what? <laughs> I think there's an equal part on both, mm-hmm. but I think Brittany is typically the one to start initiating. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm not saying Santana can't be so spontaneous and decide to flower petals and candles and stuff or chase Brittany into the shower and start yeah, getting her wound up. But for the most part, I think Brittany's the initiator. Um, the next one is uh, stamina. How many rounds can they go for? How long do they last? And who's the Energizer Bunny? Oh, Santana's the energizer buddy. I would say Brittany. Me, I would say Santana. The reason I say that is because once she's in the zone, like, mm-hmm. and she's ready and comfortable, she's in the zone. Um, the next one is uh, risk. Are they game to experiment? If so, how? Again, okay, I, I'm sure you're like they're vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. I'm like, how many times can I answer that? I think it would depend on the risk and what it was. I think if there was, like, a Glee reunion and they were playing Truth or Dare and they got Dare to go do it and say they're at Jesse and Rachel's house mm-hmm. and somebody dared them to do it in their bed, uh, they, would totally do, they would totally do it just oh, to spite Rachel. Oh, my God, yes. But depending on the situation and who's there, 
Yeah. I think if it was, if it was really low risk, they would probably like do it in a back parking lot of the job they're working when they when like they know nobody will ever come around. Mm-hmm. But with their with a slight chance of getting caught, I don't think they're that adventurous. Yeah. No, I don't think Santana could handle that. I guess it's it's all about one's interpretation of Santana. But sometimes I still see her as I just see her as Hurt Locker Santana. Uh huh. Even though she came so far, I think there's still like tidbits of her that are still scared, even though her and Brittany are married. Like it's a, like mm-hmm. she worked so hard for them to get where they are, and she's still scared that it could all be taken away. Oh, I I get what you're saying. Yeah, because it got dang- it got dangled in her face, kind of, and then it got stripped away. No matter how far she's come, she still feels like one day somebody's gonna yank the rug out from under her. Um, the next one is volume. Are they loud? And if so, who is the loudest? Both of them are extremely loud. I think Santana's louder. Again, I think that an argument could be made on both sides of this, and it would it would make sense. But I don't know. I don't know where I land on this one. Uh, the last one is uh, sleep. How quickly do they fall asleep afterwards? Who falls asleep first? Brittany. Brittany. Yeah. I think Santana like gets in her head, and her brain just keeps going. Yeah, I agree. Mm, yeah. Plus, I think she would like to watch Britney sleep for a while after. Yeah, I agree. Santana's like a needy bitch. <laughs> she is. She is. Oh, man. So I think that's going to be it for us right now. Thank you so much, both of you, for sitting in and talking to me. And I know y'all's schedules are like crazy busy right now. So it means a lot. Yeah, no, we're so glad to be here with you. We love that you do this for the fandom. Yeah, we had so much, we had so much fun. And it just feels like the last two times you and I have tried to connect is just like something. I'm glad that we got it together, that it could be the three of us, because I feel like that it's different, and it's fun, and yeah. Yeah, sense. no, this was really fun, because I enjoyed recording with you anyway, but this was, like, extra fun. It made for an interesting conversation. Um, so, hop on the Discord if you want to chat with LK or Jay. Uh, we're there, and it's just all about Botana, but we're, you know, we're enjoying other shows, and... Yeah, if you need a community, if you need somebody to chat with, just, you know, there's other people out there and you're not alone. And make sure if you want to talk to one of us, you at us because it's just easier to see the messages as you get a notification. Yeah, especially when I'm working basically during the middle of the day, I'm not on my phone much. I, on the other hand, am home all day because I go to school at night. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, I thanks really for having it. us. Yeah, thanks for having us. No, thank y'all because like I I needed to get back to this. I needed to get back to something that I mean I needed to put my pain somewhere, and this is where I'm putting it right now. So thank y'all. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome, ma'am. Uh, I will talk to y'all later. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye, Nicole. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.